past few years have been rough. First, I failed college baseball, then I lost to King of Juco, and now Purple Team. Every major failure I incurred left me more lost and confused than the last, each time right on the verge of success, a stroke of luck away from accomplishing greatness but nevertheless falling short. I was smart enough to know that something was missing but not enough to know exactly what. Did I need to learn a new training style or maybe I just needed to push my body to a new limit? I sat in silence for some time trying to figure it out but came no closer to finding an answer. At a certain point, I decided I needed to get away from everything, thinking that maybe I needed to find peace within myself before I could find an answer. My dad suggested I go to the Beartooth Mountains in Montana, the origin of my family's Native American roots. He says that the mountains have a certain way of speaking to you. So I set off the next day to find whatever it was that I was missing. I arrived in the blink of an eye as though I'd been unconscious for the last 24 hours, and at daybreak I grabbed my gear and set off to find whatever it was I was searching for. The hike to the top was a much bigger challenge than I'd prepared myself for. The terrain changed frequently and at times the wind whipped sharp back and forth. As driven as I was to find an answer to my questions, the weight of my pack and my failures weighed heavily on me. I began to question why I came here in the first place, as if some hippie getaway would ever be able to solve the problems that plagued my life. But nonetheless, I carried on, forcing myself to keep walking, through doubt, through confusion, through exhaustion, and after what felt like an eternity, I finally reached my destination. I quickly set up camp and went out in hopes of catching dinner. After all, everything I'd read said that these lakes were so full of fish that you'd catch your daily limit within an hour. But as time went on, I grew more desperate with each cast I made. There was nothing, not even a bite. As much as I wanted to keep trying, the sun was setting on the day and I had to retreat back to my camp with nothing to show for my efforts. And as I sat by the fire that night, I felt empty. And not just physically empty from the lack of food, but emotionally and spiritually from the lack of success in my life. The flame in my heart that drove me to pursue greatness was dying out becoming nothing more than the lukewarm embers of a fire that once burned brightly. Just as the darkness had made the last three years blur together, night turned to day without me noticing, but nothing changed with the sun's arrival. I spent the better part of the next few days sitting on the beach, becoming nothing. I no longer had the desire to fish or feed this feeble and dying body at all for that matter. I called out to God many times, asking for understanding, asking for guidance, but I heard nothing. I saw nothing. I felt nothing. Was this all some sort of sick joke? He brought me all the way out here just to fail again so he could laugh at my misery? As I sank further into the darkness, the water called out to me to go for a swim I would never return from. A silly thought at first, but one that grew louder and louder as time carried on. And as the temptation grew, I finally felt it. God was pulling me once again, back to the river to fish. Begrudgingly, I gathered my fishing gear and said farewell to the voices calling out to me. At the river, I began casting with a heavy anticipation, but every cast, good or bad, came back the same. Empty. The frustration grew as I began to curse God. I had no doubt at this point that my purpose on earth was to be a source of amusement for him. How many times could he dangle the carrot in front of me before I quit playing the game? But before I could finish my fit of rage, my attention was stolen by a man approaching the river. He maneuvered through the rocky terrain effortlessly, unbothered by the obstacles. Shortly after, he began casting to the opposite bank, over and over and over, in hopes of reeling in something worthwhile. And as time went on, I became increasingly more fixated on this man. He had been out here for over an hour at this point, and caught nothing. Yet his demeanor remained calm, even delighted. I didn't understand it. How could he be so unbothered by failure? He casts and reels in nothing, again and again and again. I couldn't take it anymore, so eventually I approached him. I asked him how he remained seemingly unaffected by his continuous failure. And he said to me, but that's just it. I haven't failed. I've learned what doesn't work and I've grown because of it. But most importantly, I've learned that my time for success isn't here just yet. But just because I haven't reached my time for success does not mean that I should lose faith in the idea that I was created to be successful. It is not that I lack success, but that you lack patience. His words touched a part of me that I hadn't known for quite some time. I began to reevaluate the way I perceived my life. Maybe he was right. 
that in the age of technology and social media I had allowed myself to believe that success should be instant and that the only thing to be gained from hard work, training, and dedication was to be victorious in whatever singular competition I was using to measure myself. So I began to view my life through a different lens, doing for the sake of doing and allowing the results to be whatever God has determined they should be, casting for the sake of casting, feeling the rod and reel in my hand and appreciating the beauty of everything existing around me in each moment. And oddly enough, when I started seeing things this way, I began to find myself not only happier, but more successful. Because I haven't lost. I just haven't won yet. So I headed home to my wife and daughter, who I was desperate to hold again, but this time I was in no hurry, appreciating every step I took on my way back to them. And as I hiked down, I saw everything more clearly than I had in ages. So moving forward, I will continue to train. I will learn new styles, I will push my body to limits it's never known before, but this time it will be for the sake of enjoying the journey, with the understanding that a lack of success is not congruent with failure, just a message from God that my time for success is not here yet, but I have faith that my time will come.